you know, uh, if we study about the uh, history of Tibetan um, tradition of Tibetan Buddhism, it is considered the, the, the last stage of Indian Buddhism. Um, so Buddhism spread to uh, Tibet in 7th century, uh, and it stopped uh, in the 12th century after most invasion. So actually, the reason why for Tibetan traditions, especially Tibetan <coughs> Tibetan, is con it includes all the, the Mahaya and the Theravada. Uh, but they specialize in the, um, in the Tantric tradition. Tantric tradition. Tantra, this means Tantra, you know Tantra? They decide the mantra, let's call it Tantra. Uh, what do you call it? It's a traditional Tantra. Instead of uh, doing meditation, they decide the mantra. All right, let me show you one more time. Mm -hmm. This is the Tian Have you seen the bed monk here? Mm -hmm. Okay, not yet. Only you, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, and um, I think in um, Epcot they have like an entire section. Um, I believe it's China, and they have they have like the room you go into, and they have the chanting and everything. Where is that? I think it's Epcot because I've I've heard it before. Where is that? Disney World. Oh really? Yeah, you go around the world. You mean that in, uh, in, it's in Florida? Uh, in Florida? Yeah. In New York? Yeah. They have like China and Orla France. Or Orlando? Yeah. Oh really? Wow, that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Have, uh, it looks that they have like a, t I mean, like they build, it, like when you go to China in Epcot, it looks real. I mean, yeah, it looks real and they have. They have uh, people dressed up and they're actually from those places. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, let me show you this one too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here. This. You know what they do? Dancing. Huh? You know what they do? Kung Fu? <laughs> no. <laughs> Debating. Debating? Yes. That's the way they debate. It's huh? like a, a philosophical debate? Yes. Yeah, they That's make the move and so forth, not Kung Fu. <laughs> yeah. Good guess. It's, it's, it's actually, they followed the, the Indian traditions. Actually, when they went to India in 1998 and 1999, uh, I went to seek the teaching from uh, a, a high lama, high monk, high monks. So, um, this is the old style, the classical style. That's the monk. Uh, the, the teacher sit on high platform, or, high, or let's say he sit on this table, and you sit on the second floor. That's the old style. And of course, they do this kind of debate. In our tradition, we don't have that, but they still keep that kind of tradition. Mm. No that's, in, that's interesting. Yeah, so the person on the ground and the person standing there debating a topic? Uh-huh, so and then they can alternate. They, they can, can alternate. The so like the person who's standing is speaking their point of view, and then when it's the other person's turn, they switch? Uh-huh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know much, but, but probably that's the way. When you go to India, you see them. You see them. <laughs> you can witness that kind of debate. Yeah. OK, so that's the way they, they keep the tradition. And that's... that's um, and they all do all kinds of things. This, I show you the Tibetan uh, mandala, right? And even 
the Tibetan monks, they do the dancing too. You know, you know, seen that? Yeah. Okay. Probably I will, I will try to find some uh, video clips about um, them how to. It's not the for the normal performers, but the spiritual dancers. Right. According to Tibetan tradition, boys, no, we can, we cannot do that. <laughs> okay. So let us uh, move back here. Okay, so let's see. Um, more. You have anything to say about these traditions? Uh, yes, it was uh, just basically what uh, uh, Mackenzie said, and uh, some of the things that you said. Mm -hmm. uh, how it started in uh, the seventh century, mm -hmm. and they started translating to the uh, to Pika. Yes. They start translating from, uh, and they gather information from uh, uh, from India and from uh, the Mahayans yeah. and uh, the Indian commentaries. And what they were trying to do, they were getting every kind of information they could to translate it to in order to to get the. Uh, to Trapika, and I think their goal was in Tibet. I think what they were trying to do was they was trying to reconstruct or re revise the canons of what was written in India. They were trying to make it where it could be for all of mankind, you know, to be understood. So I think they they added. They did some revising, did, did they not? Yeah. They revised. Um, yeah, it's happened. It's happened in, uh, in most editions. Sometimes they add more text, sometimes they subtract out. But um, uh, especially in the, in the uh, Tibetan tradition, it's sometimes it's a kin. They, they organize. Um, the translation work and to push out all the, like I said, the fake one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is still from that edition. But this is just a lot to learn too. And, and it had uh, like, okay, like you was talking about philosophy, mm -hmm. yeah. and they had philosophy. I mean, it wasn't, it was a, it wasn't just, you know, like Buddha had some kind of metaphysic teaching. Mm -hmm. When you talk about evidence, you see more. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so again, this is two. One is been on Tanju. This has been the the word attributed to the Buddha. Or uh, Tanju. This mean the common English. This is the original. Uh, yes. Um, who are third author of the Tibetan Tradition? Who are they? Um, they are Buddhist scholars. Okay. Okay. Yes. So remember. Uh, Again, the Buddha didn't appoint anyone to take over his part, right? Because of what? Attachment to power, right? So, but he said that the Buddhist people need to follow his dharma and guidelines and take them as their teachers, right? And so, again, there's no authorities. No one appoint them to do this and that except that they dedication. So throughout thousand years, they, they compile and compare. You understand that? Throughout the, uh, the, the, through the uh, oral traditions. And um, nowadays, they have translated this kind of agama into English, Vietnamese, or many languages. And when, for me, when they compare, the teaching of these two set are more similar. There's not much different. But in the past, let me show you. In the past, um, for thousand years, uh, both traditions, Mahayana and Theravada, has been separate. Uh, let me see. Okay, here. 
Can you see? The red one? Here, yeah, the red one is the one, the country that follow terrain traditions, like Burma, Sri Lanka, um, uh, Thailand, um, Laos, right here. Right? And this is, the yellow one is the Mahayana. And the, what do you call this color? Porch. Porch? Okay. Porch. Uh, is that's the country like Mongolia, Tibet, and so forth? They follow the land tradition, the country tradition. So for thousand years, because of uh, of the look of uh, uh, what do you call it? geography um, difficulties, there's not much uh, uh, traffic, not for, uh, traffic between these these two region. You know, in the past, it's been hard. To travel around, it's mm -hmm. different from nowadays, right? Yeah. Not airplane, um, train, and so forth. But in the past, they they travel by foot, by by and so forth. They had a lot of mountains. Yeah, uh huh. And the reason why it's separate these two traditions for thousands of years. Up to now, when we make combination between these two, uh, two candidates, it's more similar. There's some variation, but not much. So of course, a lot of things, but that that's why. <laughs> somehow how people recognize they are so authentic that they are the word the Buddha. Of course nowadays many scholars, many Buddhist scholars, they, they have them all kind of resources and they not why they recognize this kind of canyons. This is more authentic for people to study if they want to. Um, but for the Tibetan canyon and Chinese canyons somehow because this is so there's so many, there's so many of them, there's so many texts, and they now try to translate bit by bit, but not, not much yet. And like, not, not all complete yet, like the, the Pali one. So even us, if we want to do more research about the Chinese or Tibetan Kenyans, we could not have much time, we could not have much resources to do uh, like the Pali one. So, so it's just too many. Too many. Uh -huh. I told you at the beginning, thousand. <laughs> so, like we go to the library. If you want to study psychology, pick up some books that relate to psychology or sociology. Pick up them. You cannot print all <laughs> books from the library to study at once. You have to to know the subject that you study. Like meditation, right? You go to the library, pick up the book that relates to meditation. So there's this kind of books. If you study about Buddhist history, yeah, pick up the part of that kind of history. Not all. Yeah. Who approves? Who approves the translation? Yeah. Who a compilation? Yes. Who approves it? The one like, person. Like uh, her question. No one approved that. But this is based upon the wisdom of the of the Buddhist communities. Because we don't have any pope to have that type of authority. Oh, this is the authentic, this is not authentic one. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So if one is like not truthful, mm -hmm. you, you put them out or what? Yeah, in the past, in the past, especially in China, you know, many Taoist, uh, many Taoist monks, because of their jealousy, so they, they draw some books that mm, that they they put the idea and they claim that this Buddhist book so that they can they might want to confuse the Buddhist people to bring them to Taoism. So of course it's easy to recognize, especially if you're a scholar, it's easy to recognize which one is fake one. Um, so let's say it is study math, right? And you have you're supposed to know some um, or oh, chemistry, you're supposed to know some uh, some formulas, right? And if someone put some kind of weird formulas, you recognize on the spot. If you if you ask for, it's a common sense. So again, there's no central authorities. No one can approve with their authority except the wisdom of communities. That's why it feels still reserved up to now. It's very really hard for you to understand, right? You imagine, right? But that that's work for thousand years. <laughs> right? uh -huh. yeah, it's just based on common sense. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's just move on. And 
in the next one, um, Vinaya Nick is here. Nick's not here. He's here. Uh, Aaron. Oh yeah. What do you have then? Uh, the Vinaya Pitaka was part of the, the Tipitaka. Yes. Uh, it was the, the or well, like the laying down of rules for the lay community for the uh, monks and nuns. Yes. And it had uh, several parts. Uh, which, uh, and it was supposed to be uh, just basically how the, the Sangha would, like the rules for uh, the interaction of the Sangha and what. And the, uh, the first four rules were the uh, cardinal rules, which were um, like if you violated them, you could be cast out of mm -hmm. the monastery. Yeah. And they were that you couldn't have uh, sexual intercourse, although, it, uh, or you couldn't steal, kill, or uh, make false spiritual claims. And uh, there are all kinds of nuances and different uh, translations and exceptions and different yeah. translations of the Tipitaka. But principally, you know, it's... Yeah. Remember I told you, that's four men, uh, the four major precepts for the monks and nuns. And, uh, mm, and the, mind, the difference is only the minor one, dependent upon the location, dependent upon um, the country that they, they live in. It's just common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, well, of course, let's say if you visit uh, Japan, you've been to Japan before? Uh, no, I'm going when I graduate. Oh, really? Are you going to teach over there? Yeah. Oh, good. And don't be surprised. And because you see many monks, they call themselves monks, but they marry. Oh. Why? You know, in the um, early 19th century, is a uh, Shinto uh, emperor. I forgot his name. He, uh, of course, he promotes, uh, you know, Shinto, right? And he he tried um, to, let's say that, um, uh, deduce the, the influence of Buddhism in the court. And he announced, made announcements, okay, from now on, if you are Buddhist monks, now you welcome to get married and consume meat. You free now. So of course, some of them jump into that <laughs> scam. So, what, what country was this? Japan. Japan. Okay. And um, of course, this happened uh, here and there before, but because of that kind of um, permission, so Japanese, Japanese monks and nuns they got married to, from that time on. And now, up to now, it's about a few percent of Japanese, Japanese monks and nuns who remain in the, um, uh, in the authentic tradition, as many who remain as um, this, uh, what we call celibacy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So could that king, was it a king? The emperor, emperor. The Japanese emperor. emperor. So <laughs> he, he, did he go against the Buddhist teaching? You can say that, because it promotes Shinto, you know Shinto, right? And he tried to reduce the influence of the Buddhism to the court. Because throughout many, many centuries, Buddhist, Buddhism has uh, great influence on the Japanese court. So the reason why he, he made that type of uh, rules and permissions, and that's, that's somehow destroyed Buddhism now. Uh, what century was that in? I think in early 19th century, or, or okay. late in, the 18th century. And uh, uh, plus, when you visit uh, some Tibetan uh, center, unless uh, the Buddhist monks who follow the Dalai Lama set, the, 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 the yellow set, otherwise you see a different set, the monks and nuns they get married to. The reason why in Tibet the they revert, they, they respect the um, Dalai Lama set more than others. Okay, so in Tibet, they they do not marry. Uh, basically, there's four men school, mm -hmm. but uh, the only school that follow uh, strictly uh, the vinayas, okay. uh, uh, the the rules of the discipline is they, they set up uh, a school of the Dalai Lama, the yellow hat school. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see no sense. Yeah, okay. yellow hat. Yeah. So this is good. Uh, there no information. For you, so don't be surprised. Don't be surprised, right? And if that—that's why they have the problem in, in Japan nowadays. 
in many many Japanese um, monastery temples, they because the temple belonged to what they call the family business. The the fathers pass the um what do you call it? the ownership of the temple to the son, and then that's just like the family business. So don't be surprised <laughs> when you go there. Okay. All right. So um, again. That's just common sense, common, the, the, main, the form, common one, and uh, the other one is the minor because uh, of the differences in the geography, uh, geographical uh, differences. Mm. And the way how we wear the, sh the drops, right, you see that? Uh, mm. Sometimes we wear the, the orange, sometimes we wear the yellow, or even now, even this one, this one is, can I say, this is Chinese style. The other one, the one that I, I showed you last time, right, that's the, the uh, high style. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk more about that one. Okay, um, who does this one too? Uh, okay, on the Aaron, that's all you have? Uh, uh, it's pretty much, it was pretty much. There was the, the other rules, it was the layout, it would just go, it would be the, a story with the Buddha telling about how the uh, the rule came about in the situation and why the rule is beneficial. And then sometimes it kind of would be the statement of the rule. And then sometimes it would also be like subsequent stories of different interpretations of the rule almost and uh, different. And it was all the different sections of the different rules of different circumstances. Of, and, uh, and that was also playing into the different translations of each set and different numbers of rules. And, Remember I told you last time, right? Twelve years after his enlightenment, right? He, he established the rules based upon the mistake of the monks because he accepted everyone into the Sangha, right? From every class, right? From half class to the lower one. Right? So the reason why, especially the one, let's say, who are, who are under, under, uneducated, untrained, right? They mess up. And so the reason why the Buddha established that kind of rules. For example, so the Buddha allowed them to have their hut, to build their hut in the forest so that they can, they could sit in meditation. So some monks, they, they use the axe uh, to cut down the trees. And this has been complained by the lay people. So from that time on, the Buddha established the rules. Okay, when you cut down the tree, you have to ask permission from the owners or wherever. And even us, too, at our monastery, uh, uh, bef of course, trees belong to our properties. But before we cut the trees, we need to put uh, the signs to invite the spirit um, to get out the trees. Best friends for you. Say that again. Okay. Okay. You okay, okay. Let me put this back on you. Okay. okay now, <coughs> this belief this is based upon the belief too. Remember, we talked about the sit part, the bird, right? Mm -hmm. Sit part of the bird, right? We have mm -hmm. heaven. <coughs> We have human, we have animals, hell, ghost, and um, fighting, fighting war. Okay, right, this part, right? Mm -hmm. right? Visible and invisible. Visible is between human and animals, right? So, if we believe that, it's, um, let's say we have this human body. Our soul, our spirit is inside in this body. How about the spirit? Our conscious views. There's, they, they, let's say they, they live in the form of war. And they don't have body to live. So they may decide in the tree, for example. You understand that? So the reason why before we cut down the trees, we need to put the side to invite them to find a different place. Oh, okay. Make sense to you now? Um, so we don't cut trees for fun unless it's, it's necessary. Of oh. course, we um, we uh, cherish the um, what do you call environment? Uh, what do you call what do you call the water environment? Protect environment. Uh, 
protection, uh, protection uh, environment. What is that? Eco. What is that? Ecosystem. Ecosystem. Yeah, ecology. Ecology. Yeah. Uh, so, so, but that's is they live there. Mm. Anyway, so uh, again, yes. Okay. So understand that. So that's just our respect. That's all. For me, that's just our respect for the for the spirit. Not much good the superstition. <laughs> All right, so yeah, okay. So let's us move on. The next one is sutta, or sutra. Ashley, Miss Ashley, what do you have there? Um, the sutta pitaka is otherwise known as the basket of discourses. Mm -hmm. It's the most well-known section of the Theravada canon. It contains 30 volumes of sutras and is the largest of the three collections of texts that make up the Tipitaka. Yeah. And the discourses usually start with "Thus I have heard," which is a statement that is associated with. Recitation of his teachings. Yeah. And um, there are a wide variety of questions answered by the Buddha and the Sutta Pitaka, but there were still many worthwhile questions that were not addressed. And the Buddha would not answer questions relating to the age and extent of the universe, the relationship between the body and the life force within it, and the Buddha's existence after death. And so um, there's a famous story about a monk who threatened to leave the Sangha if the did not answer those three questions. Mm -hmm. And the Buddha smiled and said that the man was similar to a man who had been shot with a poison arrow and refused any medical treatment until he knew many details, including who had shot the arrow, what type of bullet was used in the arrow. And the Buddha turned this into a lesson for his followers that we should not waste our time and energy speculating on things that truly don't matter and instead focus on what actually causes our suffering and how we can end it. And there's one more cool fact about Monks and nuns also memorize 423 verses of the Dhammapada, which I guess is a part of the Tantra, yeah. um, in verse form. And verse 183 has become one of the most well-known verses because yeah. it summarizes the Buddha's teachings quite nicely. It says, avoiding every bad deed, cultivating what is beneficial, purifying one's own mind. This is the instruction of the Buddhists. This is the famous one. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's just what. Hatch for hatred does not cease by hatred at any time. Hatred cease by law. There is eternal rules. It's simple. This is some the like you said. There's many, not all, but many um, Buddhist monks and then memorizes, but not all. But uh, usually I, I quote this kind of sutra to teach uh, the lay like, people. It's much easier to understand than than other long one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it just deals with the conduct, the person's conduct, how to behave. Yeah, and and how how to deal with people too. Okay, right here. Okay, now. This is Pali Sutta, the one, the first one, the Liga or Nikaya, long discourse. They spill long, many chapters. And this is the middle one, the middle land, and it's connect discourse. See that? It's small. Can you read the number? Mm -hmm. 7,762. <laughs> yeah. And this one is? 9,500. Yeah. But it's short. Yeah. It's short. It's all, yeah, all kind of sutra. And this is short discourse. And this is Jataka, that's his birth story that that he when he let's say when he talk about any subject, for example, uh, compassion. So sometimes he relate to his past life stories that he, that may have connection with the person he talk about. Mm -hmm. You're talking about the Buddha. Yeah, Buddha. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's what called the birth story. And Tana it's, it's the verses of Arhat, or the monk who achieved ownership, the monk, that means the holy monk. And plus this one is for holy nun, the one who have achieved that type of state of mind, nirvana state of mind, nun too. Not the monk, but nun. So, so that, um, yeah, that's, that's, their, that's their own verses. This is, they, they, they spoke their own verses, not the Buddha, after the enlightenment. Right? And some story, ghost story here. <laughs> this is story. 
and some to story of the Deva. Deva is mean uh, heaven, heavenly beings, uh, celestial beings. This is this is tw uh, more than twelve hundred, and this all the sutra too. Anyway, so all kind of sutra, all kind of subject. And this is sometimes the Buddha is remember when we talk about the late daily activity with the Buddha is early in the morning, Deva or celestial beings came down to seek the teaching from you. That's what this talk of you did too. So if you have a problem with something, I can do is turn into them one of those pages. You want to? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a lot, and this is the only party only. This is the only party. Not talking about the second one, the huge one, like this one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, let's move on then. <clears throat>